You know what? I want to try something different. Interspersed with my other reviews, I'm going to do retrospectives of animation history. We'll start at the very beginning and go decade by decade. And I'm not just talking movies or television. We're going to go into people, short films, technology, and anything else that may have moved the medium. Why am I going to do this? I don't know. Animation history is my kick right now. I mean, I could say that it gives us more insight into our current era, but I'm just going to be honest here. I can get really invested in certain topics to a borderline obsession. And right now, that's animation history. If you know why, then you know why. I looked at a bunch of books and websites and stuff, and while they do have good knowledge, they tend to not go in deep enough. There are things that always seem to be left to the wayside. Granted, plenty of things have been lost to the sands of time, and not everything was well documented, but that doesn't change the fact that we don't have an expansive record of animation history in one place beyond milestones. Hey, I never said this was going to be easy, but let's do this. And where would we start but the very beginning? Like most other mediums, what counts as the first animation largely depends on what you would define as animation. People have been interested in seeing pictures move since paintings on cave walls. There were also novelty little inventions over the years that gave the illusion of animation. In 1650, we got a device called the Magic Lantern. From what I could tell, it's more or less a film projector that showed off a series of pictures one after the other, in a slideshow format. Later than that, we got something called a zoetrope. What you do is draw moving pictures on the inside of a wheel and cut holes in between them to peek through. Then you spin the zoetrope and it gives the illusion of animation. You can actually see what one looks like in Disney's animated feature Tarzan. Don't get used to seeing color in this video, by the way. When I talk about animation, I generally mean pictures displayed fast enough for the eye to capture the illusion of motion that does not rely on user input besides, I don't know, pressing play or something. Basically, the animation does the job itself. Even then, it's kind of an opinion on what you'd count as the first animation. Before I continue, I want to mention this phrase, that we know of. Whenever I present a fact, imagine that it's preceded with a phrase, that we know of. Even when I get to things like the first Flash animated movie or the first internet cartoon, there's always a chance that some independent project or some weird experiment that was never documented or was done in some obscure country by people who weren't notable in the slightest has happened. Even with my own definition of animation, it's still debatable what you'd call the first animation. A stop motion technique was used in 1897 during the Humpty Dumpty Circus, which I can't find anywhere. Apparently, the director, J. Stuart Blackton, used his daughter's set of small circus dolls with jointed limbs in order to create some kind of movie, which, once again, I I can't find anywhere. It may very well be lost. You see, back in the day, film in general was seen largely as a novelty, and no one thought that it would be a good idea to save it. And despite the even larger efforts to make animation than live action at this point in time, the medium seemed to get the shaft even worse. We're missing a lot of important animation milestones. I mean, it's not anything major, just the first feature-length animated film, and the second one, and the first color cartoon. The first animated sequence that we do know about was in another film by J. Stuart Blackton, and the year 1900. It's essentially a visual trick that you've probably done with your home camcorder at some point. In the film, Blackton draws a face on a paper. Then he draws a wine bottle and a glass and pulls it off the page. With no in-film action, both the glass and the wine are removed from the background while the man's face changes expression. When fed the wine bottle, the man smiles. When the man's hat and pipe are taken, he gets mad. And when he gets them back, he turns into a demon. At least, that's what it looks like. I don't know if you'd really call this an animated film or not. Personally, I'd go with his later work. In 1906, he came up with the first entirely animated film. Humorous phases of funny faces. Besides him drawing on a chalkboard occasionally, it's entirely animated. What happens in it? Well, it's more of faces changing around. It's probably his earlier idea fully realized. But yes, the very first animations were essentially making faces at people. That doesn't dampen how much of a technical marvel this film is for its time. The film was made mostly with stop motion. He needed to take an individual picture of each of these images, and some of them were even played backwards. If you know anything about the technology this time, doing that must have been a major pain in the ass. The rest of the film was made with cutout animation. You basically move around a cutout material like paper, fabric, or photographs and film them. You probably know this technique from South Park, but if I'm not mistaken, that's done with computers. This year was still done with photographs. Because of these two films, James Stuart Blackton is known as the father of American animation, even though his achievements have been largely overshadowed by Winsor McKay and later Walt Disney. That's because the guy was largely more interested in making silent, non-animated films, which were still kind of new at the time. The film projector was about 20 years old at this point. That's pretty much all of his other films he made until 1927, including many adaptations of Shakespeare's work, although he frequently did use animated effects. 
like in the Smoke Fairy here, but he didn't make another fully animated feature. That doesn't mean these effects still weren't impressive. In 1907, he directed the film The Haunted Hotel. Most of the film is in live action. It's about tourists staying in a hotel run by ghosts, and some of the effects are just glorious. When this guy had a technique, he used the shit out of it. I honestly can't tell if this is a horror movie that relied on effects that haven't aged the best, kind of like The Exorcist, or if it's a pure comedy movie, because honestly, it's really funny. There's a house, there's a house, boop, it has a face. Most of the effects were done with wires and jump guts, but there's one sequence that was done with stop motion. Maybe I'm just easily impressed, but the stop motion effect here looks really good over 100 years later. I mean, the animated clip is easier to find than the rest of the film, and that's what I watched first, but the first time I saw it, I honestly thought that it was made today and someone just put an old grain filter over it. But no, this is legit. Also, in 1907, we got our first piece of Japanese animation. It's called Kasudo Sashin, or Moving Picture. Unfortunately, I don't have much to say about it, for two reasons. Number one, it's only three seconds long. Number two, no one knows who made it. Like I said, information this old is limited. What do we know about it? It was drawn directly on a film roll using a stencil, and that's literally it. Actually, I said it came out in 1907. It could have been any time between 1907 and 1911. Why do we know so little about it? I don't know, maybe because it was uncovered in 2000 in just a random home projector? Yeah, one day you two can find a random comic book or a movie that changes our knowledge of a medium in your attic or at a yard sale. 1908 is when things really started taking off. The most notable piece was a short film by a French man named Emile Cole. He drew something up called Phantasmagory, and this is largely considered by many to be the first animated film. Why? Because it was the first one not made by stop motion, provided that Katsudo didn't come out last year. Basically, the film was created by drawing each and every frame on paper and then shooting them onto a negative film. Film. It took over 700 drawings for about a minute of film. Like many of the films of this era, there's not much happening in it besides showing off the wonder of animation. Its title's appropriate because it gets kind of chaotic, things more from one to another without much transition. And it's also not done in shock, it's just a visual effect, probably to replicate humorous phases of funny faces. Cole actually did have two more films this year, The Love Affair in Toyland and The Puppet's Nightmare. The latter one is lost, unfortunately. At least The Love Affair in Toyland is still around, which is good because the title beckons interest. And believe it or not, it may be the first animation with an actual plot. A man tries to something a woman and she gets away. He ends up stealing her dress. She comes across a policeman who clothes her and he gets a medal. Then a man tries to stab a woman and a potted plant grabs him. Yeah, I didn't say it was the most coherent plot, but it's definitely an identifiable plot. The Electric Hotel is another film that takes place in a hotel and uses stop motion effects to an impressive degree. I wouldn't call it a ripoff of the Haunted Hotel though. I mean, there wasn't exactly like internet or anything in these days, and these things do take a while to make. It's probably just coincidence. It's also one of the earliest examples of pixelation, which is just a fancy term for using stop motion with actual people instead of puppets. And if you look at something like the hairbrushing scene, it's definitely more ambitious than other stop motion films of this era. In 1909, the only animation I could find was Teddy Roosevelt's Arrival in Africa. In this short film, he walks up to a tree full of animals while holding up a gun. He smiles and the short ends. I don't know why it was made, but the Library of Congress thinks it's important to the history of animation for some reason. Well, I guess this means that Teddy Roosevelt is the first real person conveyed in animation, but other than that, I don't know why this is important, or why several of these films were made. It's a weird place to end this first episode, but I wasn't actually expecting to get to 10 minutes with the 1900s. I was originally going to combine this with the 1910s, but there's a lot of stuff happening in that decade, and animation really starts taking off. Most of this decade was made up of experimentation, and it seemed that animation was more of a practical thing rather than a stylistic choice. People wanted to use it for effects rather than make their own purely animated stories. The next decade, though, is going to be really, really busy, so it might take me a while. I have a lot of research to do. Tell me what you guys think of this idea. Even with the very few projects that happened during this time, this video took me a lot of time, effort, and research to make. 